We're joined now by Chris Krebs, former director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. He's a CBS News uh, expert and analyst. Good morning to you, Chris. Good to have you back. Um, how do you react to this idea of, of President Biden characterizing the MAGA element of the party as an extreme threat to democracy? The area that I'm most focused on right now is the undermining of the legitimacy of American elections. And Governor Sununu mentioned leaders need to stand up and, and speak truth to power and, and particularly the elements of the, the GOP that continue to repeat countlessly debunked claims. I mean, we even have the GOP candidate for governor, Kerry Lake, in uh, Arizona just the other day making a, a joke about there's no way that President Biden got 81 million votes. In fact, he got more than 81 million votes. Uh, but the point here is that we do need leaders like Governor Sununu to stand up and say that this is not acceptable behavior in uh, American democracy and that we need the those that continue to push these narratives for clout, for political influence, for, for money, for mm -hmm. fundraising, uh, that, that they need to let it go and we need to move on if this American experiment is going to continue. Well, uh, we're going to continue this on the other side of that. But to, just to your point, there are 308 Republican candidates who have raised doubts about the integrity or validity of the last election, they're standing for office now. There's a reason they are using that as a political message. We're going to talk about that in a moment. So stay with us on Face the Nation. We return to our conversation now about election security with CBS News cybersecurity expert and analyst Chris Krebs. Um, Chris, I, I want to talk about something that's happening right now. Uh, social media has already changed the way we communicate and certainly our political world. President Biden said a few days ago that he has concerns about billionaire Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter. He said the platform spews lies all across the world. There's no editors anymore in America. There are no editors. How do we expect kids to be able to understand what is at stake? It's not just kids, right? Um, what concerns do you have about this happening? just days before the election, these changes to Twitter? Well, I think, I think the government, for one, has a mechanism by which they can review the acquisition. The Committee for Foreign Investment in the United States can take a look at particularly the second and third ownership positions in Twitter, uh, including Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. That is something that I'm assuming that the Treasury Department is taking a look at right now, see if they can put in place a national security agreement or even potentially unwind uh, the purchase. But I think more specifically to what's happening right now with Twitter, I think there are kind of there are two Elons that we're seeing. There's the public Elon that's, you know, trolling and saying eight dollars, please, on all the complaints about some of the shifts in the, the uh, moderation and other activities. Then there's what's happening behind the scenes, the conversations with the civil rights groups, with advertisers, with the teams, which perhaps may be a little bit more stable. And I think if you look at the platform itself right now, not a whole lot has changed. That may not be a popular opinion, mm -hmm. but I think the reality is that most you haven't seen too much of a change in the moderation. Now, the concern, though, yeah. is what happens tomorrow where you can buy the blue tick for $8 a month, the and Twitter blue. For our viewers who don't use Twitter, right. a blue check is a, a sign of credibility. It has historically been a marker of trust in that Twitter has said, we have confirmed and authenticated the identity of this person, which tends to be a politician or a news media personality or a journalist, uh, an academic, or someone that may be a popular voice in certain civil rights, civil liberties issues. Now you can buy it for eight bucks a month. And along with a number of other features of editing and longer form video posting. But again, to have such a dramatic shift in that marker of trust, now you can buy it in advance of, as we've been talking about, a very contentious and important election. It opens the information space to a broader uh, community of influencers, clout chasers, election denialists, and, and foreign is, actors. Absolutely. I mean, we've we've seen reports lately of Russia, China, and Iran back at their old tricks, mm -hmm. and it is going to create a, a very chaotic environment. Um, to that point, in in twenty. 18, during the midterms, Cyber Command took offensive operations to take out Russian trolls who were spreading misinformation. Um, the New York Times has a story today saying Russia's back at it. Mm -hmm. um, what does that say to you about U.S. defenses? Well, I think, so Recorded Future and Graphica, two research firms have released uh, information that Russian 
bots, trolls associated with the Internet Research Agency, which is a group that targeted six, the 2016 and the 2018 election, are back at it and are undermining this time Democratic candidates for uh, Senate in some of the, the, the more contentious races. Uh, I think what it says is that the, uh, the, there's a broader community of actors. They recognize that political discourse is very divisive here in the U.S., and they have more opportunities, uh, probably than ever before, to continue to undermine confidence, to create chaos, which is really their primary objective here, is not necessarily that a winner wins, but that we've all lost, lost confidence, and they degrade the American dem, uh, you know, democracy experiment. Mm -hmm. um, there are also a number of sitting senators, uh, and uh, of note, Ambassador Richard Grinnell of former President Trump's acting director of national intelligence, has been posting some misleading information. That's him on the screen about the election. He said any state which doesn't count all the votes and announce the winner Tuesday night is incompetent. Now, so, so all 50 states then by that formulation? Because what you're saying is yeah. just the fact that votes are never finalized yes. on a election night. But why do you think someone who knows better is posting something like that? Well, whether he knows better, I, I can't assume that. But the point here is that it's for clout chasing. It's for influence. There is a reward system and structure set up right now within the far right of the GOP that provides additional engagement. So you, you tweet something like that, and you can see your likes, your retweets, your amplification really take off. And if you're just talking about some other, you know, more mundane domestic issue, nobody cares. But there's a reward system and incentive structure that's set up where exactly this sort of messaging is, is rewarded. It's, it's encouraged. And, and this is, again, going back to Governor Sununu's comments. We need leaders to lead. We need the presumptive leaders of the Republican Party to stand up and say, this is unacceptable. This is not how it works. We need to be good faith actors in this process. And unfortunately, leaders aren't leading right now. Chris Krabs, thank you, as always, for your analysis. And we will see you on election night as part of CBS coverage at our democracy desk here at CBS News.